Hi, I'm Mayor Frank County, and this month we're celebrating Hispanic Heritage Month. It's nationally recognized in the time frame between September 15th and October 15th. So we're going to go down to Dos Rios, which is where we are right now, and we're going to meet with Aaron King, and he's going to talk about a little bit about what's going on down there. There's a new sound in the air. Well, we're going to visit with Juan Rodriguez at 12:60 a.m. La Reina Spanish Radio Station. It's going to be exciting. Stick with us, we'll be right back. Des Moines, we have it all. With Des Moines' new smart card parking meters, there is no need to carry around a pocket full of change. There are over a thousand parking meters that now accept the new smart cards. Use your smart card at downtown meters. Insert the card and buy time on the meter. Come back, insert the card again, and the remaining value is refunded back to your card. You can purchase smart cards at any one of the three vending machines, which are located at City Hall, the 3rd and Court Parking Garage, and the 9th and Locust Parking Garage. Get yours today and leave your change at home. We're in the dining room now of uh, Dos Rios, and I'm here with Aaron King, and Aaron's uh, chef here at Dos Rios. Aaron, welcome to City Spotlight. Good morning. Thank you. Talk to us a little bit about Dos Rios and uh, what's going on here and how the theme works, and uh, talk a little bit about your cooking and your experience. And Absolutely. Well, Dos Rios has been around for a little over three years now. Um, and down here at Court Avenue, it's a busy district of Des Moines, obviously. It's a nice place to be, uh, especially for a large restaurant like we have. Um, Dos Rios has seen a lot of changes in its menu and its approach to things, but still a lot of things have remained consistent. We have a diverse menu, so we have a lot of traditional items that are prepared a little bit differently than what you might find at, at other Mexican restaurants around town. So we have quesadillas, and enchiladas, tacos, uh, but they're all but they're all done a lot more authentically. Um, and those so are talk to us. What does authentically mean? I mean, well, how... for instance, when you go to majority of Mexican restaurants in town and you order an enchilada, it comes out of a steam table. It's covered in sauce and topped with cheese, and so it's more of a casserole. Okay. Um, whereas our, our enchiladas are much more authentic. So we make a rub for them uh, out of chilies and, and butter and oil, and we rub the tortillas, fill them with the filling, and then they're actually cooked off in the oven. Um, so there's not a real heavy sauce on them. Um, they're a nice baked enchilada, and then we serve our enchilada saucer, which is a green verde sauce on the side with those. Uh, the tacos are more similar to what you would find at one of the taco trucks around town, um, which are just like the taco trucks you would find in Mexico. So um, that's what I mean by more authentic on that side okay. of the menu. And then we have our entree section and our appetizer section, which is, allows us to have a little more fun um, with, with, the, with the cuisine. Uh, we use a lot of classic techniques, a lot of ingredients, and we, we may play off of culinary trends that are going on throughout the country or around the world. Uh, bringing in ingredients from other regions a little bit uh, just to help enhance the the traditions of the of the of the Hispanic culture in their food um, so you know bringing in clams with chorizo on the appetizer menu is a great dish that we just started yeah. doing so it's clams sauteed with with chorizo uh, traditional Mexican sausage and then we braise them in beer um, you know the pork belly and bringing in snapper and a lot of nice fresh ingredients that we get to have fun with so um, it's a diverse menu. 
And, and as you guys move through a year, mm -hmm. does your menu change by the season a little bit? Yes. I mean, you have fall dishes, winter dishes. Yes, uh, absolutely. You know, like any restaurant or the majority of restaurants, we have our mainstays. The traditional, the traditional items, so the enchiladas, tacos, quesadillas, sure. mocajetes, uh, those items remain year-round. Uh, the entrees and the appetizers is the ones that we switch out. So we have some entrees in there that are crowd favorites, and so we don't mess with them. Um, we may tweak them here and there, but they're ingredients, you know, salmon. You, know, you need a salmon on your, on your menu year-round. However, when, when wild salmon is in season coming up here soon, we'll be bringing in, uh, bringing in wild salmon from Alaska. So um, there's seasonality there. But then, yeah, we do, uh, we're about ready to start working on our fall and winter menu um, to bring in some new items, switch out some of the summer items, bringing in more robust flavors, warming, um, all those approaches to the food. We've talked about uh, sort of your, your uh, entrees, your appetizers. How do you finish it off? Are there traditional dessert kind of mm -hmm. items that uh, are part of the Latino culture? Absolutely. We do uh, churros, which are the, uh, the fried cinnamon um, dough. Mm -hmm. uh, we do flans. Uh, we do a uh, tres leches cake, which is one of my favorite. It was actually my wedding cake. <laughs> or my rehearsal dinner cake. Yeah. So it's a it's a cake that you soak three times in milk, and so it wow. soaks up all this milk, and it's just oh, it's so juicy and just wonderful. Uh, we make all of our desserts in house. We have a caramel cheesecake. Um, so throughout the whole menu, there's uh, there's a lot of tradition involved. Uh, our staff in the back is wonderful. Uh, they all have a long family history of some of these dishes. So it's funny because there'll be one dish, just like, just like our traditional American dishes, where there's one dish and each one of them has a different way of making it. And so we bring a lot of those things into our food, um, into the way we approach them, and use everybody's input back there. So it's, it's, a, it's a fun kitchen to work in. Well, I think it's going to be fabulous. And in, in just listening to it, I'm ready to, to have uh, breakfast, lunch, and dinner here. <laughs> but uh, um, so, by the way, you guys do lunch, dinner, don't do a breakfast? Uh... Uh, during farmer's markets, obviously, we set up front. Um, okay. So farmer's market Saturdays, we do do breakfast. Um, but we do lunch, dinner, caterings. We have two party rooms. Okay. So there's a lot of things that we that we can provide for people. So. All right. Now, you, you're going to show us a couple of, or at least one real special dish, uh, one you just add to the menu. Why don't we move back to the kitchen and let's take a look and uh, watch it, put it together. All right, let's go. All right. Thanks, Eric. Absolutely. of Dos Rios with Aaron King. Aaron is going to uh, uh, prepare one of your favorite dishes, or at least maybe a new one on the uh, on your menu, yep. and uh, kind of a Guadalajara. Talk to us about that, and, and with a kick, kind of, huh? Yeah, well, we uh, here at Dos Rios, everything we do is, uh, we do a lot of traditional Mexican cuisine, Guadalajara-inspired, uh, but then we also do, on our entree sections, we take a lot of liberty with things and use traditional Mexican preparations, ingredients, techniques, and present them in more of a refined American approach. So that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna do our adobo rub pork belly with uh, bacon, spinach, and uh, Latin food scoops. All right, so I'm gonna get out of the way. I'm gonna get behind you and sort of watch what you're doing okay. here, but um, let's kind of talk, talk us through what you're doing as you're doing it, if Absolutely. you wouldn't mind. Okay, all right. So to make this dish, the first thing we do is we have to make the adobo paste. To make the adobo paste, we start with, with chilies, um, we have some anchos and some casilla chilies, and we simply put them into a hot pan and roast them off. And so these, I'm going to take some liberty with it this morning, but normally you would you would toast these until they start to be, become aromatic. They'll soften up. Now, Aaron, as you uh, learned this preparation, uh -huh. how did you train for it? I mean, did you did you have to go on site uh, in a traditional Mexican restaurant, or did you uh, get it in uh, well, me, chef school? Or how, me, how I, went to, I went to culinary school at the Culinary Institute of America in Hyde Park, New York, and so I had very extensive training out there. Um, but for me, I eat a lot of Latin cuisine at home. Uh, my, I spent a lot of time out in San Jose. Uh, San Francisco area. My wife's from San Jose. Um, so I learned a lot of what I know about Latin cuisine from my books. Uh, the, 
prep cooks in the basements, the line cooks, um, the food they brought in from their mothers, their fathers, and the food that they made. That's where I learned a lot of my uh, Latin cuisine. Um, and then also reading books, reading magazines, all that kind of thing. So here at Dos, it's nice. We have Julio Gamboa, who's the chef of this particular restaurant. Me, I work for all of our restaurants. Um, and so we have a nice collaboration, um, you know, with his traditional approach and my refined American approach. So at this point, these have been sautéed. They're starting to soften up a little aromatic. We're going to add some chili pepper, a little cinnamon, a good amount of paprika, uh, cumin, coriander. We're just going to, again, toast these until they become aromatic. Uh, anytime you're working with spices, especially in Latin cuisines, uh, spices are a big part of it. So you want to really cook them properly, which means heating them through before you add any of your other ingredients. Okay. So garlic, shallots, we just give those a rough saute. And then, this is where our liquid comes from, we're going to add some cherry vinegar which gives it a nice little zest, a little, little acidity, and cilantro. And so at this point, we would take it off the heat, and we'd put it into the blender. And we'd end up with this really nice adobo paste. Okay. And so this is very uh, pungent. It's not overly spicy. It does have a good amount of spice to it. But it's more uh, zesty, refined, it's very earthy. So now we take our pork belly, which here I have two of them that have already been rubbed. We would have let these sit overnight. Pork belly. With the rub on. With the okay. rub on it. That All way right. it penetrates well, tenderizes the meat. Pork belly is the actual belly of the animal. It's what's used to make bacon. Uh, but it just comes in an uncured form for this dish. So we take these. In a nice hot pan, we're going to sear them off, and we start adding the rest of our ingredients. So again, we'd add our onions, and our garlic, and then you'll see that we add a lot of the same ingredients that we put in the rub. This way we have them cooking for different amounts of time. Uh, they're added at different stages, which will give us that beautiful depth of flavors that's common in, in, in well-done Latin cuisine. Yeah, I've got to tell you, with all the burners going, it's hot here. Oh, you should be in here Saturday night during a heat wave. I got it, I got it. <laughs> when, when us cooks are crying about it, you know it's hot. And so we're just going to give this a quick saute. Uh, and this is a process where, like I said, we want to sear this on all sides. And we're going to add some chicken stock to this. A good amount of chicken stock because this is going to go into our oven for about four hours. This is a great fall dish to warm you up on those cool fall nights. And it's wonderful for leftovers, for tacos, quesadillas, any of those kinds of things. So at this point, we added our chicken stock. I just added a little bit more of that adobo paste. And I'm going to put in a good amount of fresh cilantro. And this would be covered to go into about a 350 degree oven for approximately four hours. And so these are totally tender, just like any other stew meat that you've ever made, any crock pot okay. dish, same types of things. And it would actually work very well in a crock pot. So for the next part of this dish, we're just going to finish it. We're going to make the uh, the side dishes to go with it. In this case, we're doing a bacon spinach and a, and a Latin inspired couscous. Okay. So the, both of these are very simple. can be used with anything, but they go great with the pork belly. So for the spinach, we're just going to add a little bit of onion, a pinch of salt and pepper. And here at Dos Rios, we use our Dos Rios spice, which is the spice blend that we have made for us. It's got about 40 ingredients in it. Okay. And, uh, it is for sale if people want to buy some from us. We're going to add our spinach. And we have some nicely cooked off bacon here. We're going to wait to add this. It's already cooked. We don't want to take it too far and burn it. We're just going to wilt that down. That's how simple. 
simple that. For the next side dish with this one is our Latin inspired couscous. So here I have some shallots and garlic. Okay. A good amount of jalapeno. Looks like Julio made that one, so we'll leave some aside. And uh, this is our uh, our bean salad. It's a corn and bean salad. So it has uh, it has kidney beans, uh, corn, uh, tomatoes, cilantro, and then this is couscous. Uh, so couscous is not a, a Latin dish, but it's, it goes wonderful, and uh, and so we we kind of played with it, made it work for our style of cuisine. So here again, we're just going to heat everything up. And couscous is real simple to make. It's similar, it's a grain, but it eats like a rice. And the best thing about it is you don't have to cook it. You simply bring liquids to a boil. In this case, we use water with uh, orange juice, lime juice, so a little citrusy. You simply pour it on the top, cover it with some plastic wrap for five minutes, and it's ready to eat. Okay. It's just got to absorb the moisture. And then here, we have some pork belly that we finished off ahead of time. So to plate this, Now for the presentation. Now right? for the presentation. That's right. So for the plating of this, we uh, at those what we do is we serve two of these uh, pork bellies. By putting them back in the oven, we got the skin nice and crispy. We simply put them over the top. This is the liquid that we cooked them in. We just strained it out. Got all the all the onions and everything out of it. So it's nice and clean. Take some of our couscous on this side over here. Now what's the name for this particular dish? And, and this is a new creation? Yeah, this is one that's been on our menu for a couple months. Um, it's, it's going pretty well. This is in our entree section. It's a uh, it's an adobo rub pork belly, and uh, it's it's a pretty popular dish. We also use this pork belly here at the restaurant to make tamales uh, that are fantastic. So it's a very versatile item, um, and it's very easy to cook. It's very forgiving meat, so it's hard to overcook it. And this is the uh, the adobo rub pork belly here at Dos Rios. So it's a modern use of uh, traditional techniques and ingredients uh, to make a wonderful lunch. Sure. Thank you. That was terrific. Absolutely. <laughs> we'll be right back. I hope you found something on the community calendar that you and your family can enjoy in and around the city of Des Moines this month. Here we are uh, at the new La Reina 1260 AM Spanish radio station with Juan Rodriguez, who's the owner of uh, this whole business complex. Uh, Juan, welcome to City Spotlight. And let's Thank talk you. a little bit about... Uh, La Reina and, uh, and everything that you're doing, but your outreach with, uh, with the Latin, Latino uh, music. Okay, yeah, La Reina is a, a we just uh, bought it from um, a company, broadcaster company, like mm -hmm. uh, six weeks ago we bought it. Um, it's uh, the second Latino radio station here in Des Moines. Um, we are uh, growing fast. We have about 1,200 um, fans in Facebook. Um, we, um, we get like uh, maybe 60% of the state from Mason City to um, border uh, in the south, Missouri. 
from the um, almost um, Iowa City to uh, west to Omaha. We covered that that part. It's a it's a 5,000 watts uh, AM. It's a big big coverage in the state. Let's talk a little bit about uh, your background. You and I talked before the show, and your background is in like technology, computer science kind of. Yes, stuff. I'm a computer engineer. I went to the college seven years in my country, Colombia, South America. Uh, I got my degree in computer engineering, and uh, I was working before I came here. I was working in uh, computer engineering there in my country mm -hmm. for a government company. Uh, when I moved in 2003 here to uh, US, I came uh, helped by my sister. Um, she helped me to come here, and uh, I started working for insurance, and I liked the business there in Chicago. Uh, months later, I, I found the opportunity to come here to, to Des Moines, and I see the, that it wasn't an a insurance uh, business, uh, Latino. And um, I start working on that, and I start um, trying to find the, the, um, the, uh, the way to open an insurance uh, business here in Des Moines. And once I move, I... Uh, Why Des Moines? I don't know. I visit Des Moines first, and it's a beautiful city. It's a beautiful, uh, beautiful state, pretty clean, uh, very, very clean, I mean. It's, um, it's, it's, it's something very, very... Um, I like it, to grow the family, to um, to do business. Is is I love the Moines. I love Iowa. I'm very happy and very proud to be here. Um, I got the, the the really nice opportunity to come to the Moines, and now I am very happy with uh, different kind of businesses that I have. Well. We're gonna we're gonna get one uh, to promote Des Moines all over the place. I think he's, he's uh, <laughs> doing a great job. Uh, let's talk a little bit. What what made you start uh, or take over La Reina? Okay. Um, and what does it mean, by the way? Uh, La Reina means the queen. The queen. The queen. Yeah. And um, before uh, I I tried to to take some information to the people to the community, and it was hard to 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 do it. It was expensive. Um, people uh, doesn't care much about about um, giving the people information the other, um, I mean the other stations, Latino radio stations, and they uh, they didn't give me the opportunity to transmit the message to the people, and uh, I I said I have to, to get a radio station to uh, work with the community, to help well, the community. Well, let's talk a little bit more uh, uh, in detail about that. So the the format of the station is you, you have Latino music, Yes, but you also uh, do essentially a, a news and information and and what? Uh, how do you? We have what's the, the uh, morning show. Okay. Uh, we give the uh, weather, uh, different things in the morning, trying to make the people uh, have fun. At uh, 10 a.m. we have the news uh, with uh, with the uh, Mireya, very expert person. To um, we we are the only ones who do the uh, Latino news in the morning. Latinos, local news. Okay, so you do uh, local, local Latino news. Music, uh, and news, news yeah. and news. And music, we have different um, kind of music. We got uh, Mexican um, groups, and most of the music are according to the people who live in, in, in Iowa. We got 74% of um, people from Mexico who live here in the, in the state. So we got like, around 70% of music from Mexico. I mean, you can reach 74% uh, of those people in Iowa that are Latino or Mexican? We, we can, I, we, we hope to reach at least 60, 70% of the Latinos in, okay. in Iowa. We have different uh, ways to reach them. We have internet to listen to um, the, the radio station. We got the uh, call to listen. It's a, a very um, good tool. You can call from any phone, a fixed phone or mobile phone called the one number and you can start listening the radio we got the um, Androids um, we got the programs to Androids um, Blackberries iPhones anywhere you can hear the radio we have even people who listen us in Hawaii and Russian I don't know okay so you're, you're on the internet yeah we are so on somebody... online on the internet okay mm -hmm. and I, I, and um, how do they get you on the internet? What would be your... Uh, just uh, uh, www.lareina1260.com. Okay. It's, it's the web page. Um, 
it's it's uh it's working well we got uh like i said before like 1200 uh, people in facebook this is our sixth week and we got a lot of fans now and we are growing fast maybe 100 or more um, uh, a week and um, we are getting now sponsors we are uh, getting some sponsors and that's going to help us to to continue growing in terms of, of your broadcast in, in your programming, so you do a little uh, news weather in the morning and then music and then 10 o'clock you give them local uh, uh, news. Latino mm -hmm. news. How does the rest of the day work and, and how many on-air personalities do you have to be able to do this and is it 24 hours? It's 24 hours. We have two DJs from 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. Okay. The other part of the is music and just we run commercials and uh, information about uh, um, about the community. But we have the, from 10, 15 to 11, we invite people from the community, immigration, the police, uh, different people who can give information to the, to the, to the people, different guests that share information. Do you do it in an interview format? In, or do you, right. uh, they come on and give you a, a five minute it's interview spiel. format I think it's a, a interview she can she's she do the interview she prepare the interviews and every day we have a different people okay. yeah every day um, once a day we got the for my business insurance we do a radio show talking about that telling the people what what is the important with the insurance and teaching them many people doesn't know about insurance who can people who come from um, different countries in Central or uh, Mexico or Central America. They don't know about insurance there because they don't mm -hmm. have cars. The horses doesn't need insurance things. Sure. <laughs> and then, yeah, it's, it's, um, we, we teach, basically we teach them that what is the insurance, why they need it, and um, what is the best way to, to get it. So a lot of education yeah, stuff education. For, for the community. Yes. Uh, quickly for our listeners and, and our viewers, Talk about um, sort of the demographics. I mean, how many people uh, in your your area, or, or in Iowa for that matter, are we talking about? You and I uh, uh, shared some information before we started the show. Uh, how many families and what the exact population is and, and all those kinds of things. According to the census and up to 2010, it was 134,000 Latinos in Iowa, around 26,000 families. Okay. And um, Latinos is the biggest minority in, in Iowa. It's, it's one of the biggest population. Sure. Yeah, but um, it's... Now, you're, you're with, with your reach, with your station, what percentage of those do you think you can reach? This moment we are starting, is, uh, but we hope to, to reach at least 60% of, the, of them. Okay, good, yeah. good. It's, it's going to be... Um, because we cover most of the state, the, the radio station signal cover most of the state, and we have another tools and, and to, like I said before, the, the internet and the other um, the phones and, and that help a lot to to people who want to listen the radio. If anybody wants specific information about Lorena, how would they get it? Give give us your contact information and how best would people uh, reach you other than just call up. Yeah, our uh, office um, address is uh, 1541 East Grand Avenue. Um, number is 515-287-0055, office number. If the people want to, to call to the, the, the studio here, it's 515-528-8122, uh, the number. Or they can go online and they can email us, or there is uh, more information in the web page. It's at uh, www larena1260.com and then they can get you on Facebook or can Facebook, they tweet you and do all that Lorena, stuff? Larena, Iowa in Facebook, they can follow us in, in, in Facebook or Twitter uh, there is more um, more information able on online and internet well thank you so much for spending some time with us on City Spotlight and best of luck to you and what a great opportunity for all the, the Latino population in, in Iowa to have yet a new source of, of information, news, and entertainment. Thank so, you very much. Juan, thank you. Thank Congratulations. You very much. All Good right. luck. Thank you.
Thank you for being with us uh, today on City Spotlight. We hope that you'll uh, take an opportunity to view us again on, on the times and dates that uh, you will see on your, on your screen. Until next time, I'm Mayor Frank County, and this is City Spotlight.